Well, hey, good morning. It is Thursday and I am dentist bound. Uh, a little bit of trepidation, I'm going to the dentist, but I brush and I floss and I do all the things. The car looks crooked. <sighs> I'm trying to remember the last time I went to the dentist, the woman that cleaned my teeth, she was very pregnant and I think she had a baby on my birthday. I need to ask her. She's an interesting woman. I think she has an Instagram where they post, like it, it's a Disney based Instagram where it's just pictures of Disneyland and they have tons of followers because I guess people like to see pictures of Disney. The whole niche aspect of Instagram is so interesting. Like you can gain popularity doing the most esoteric things and I kind of love that. I'm a little late to the dentist. Not really late. I will walk in exactly when I should be there and I'd like to be there a little early, but that'll be okay. I had a good phone call this morning just talking about things and you know, nothing necessarily got solved, but it was good to just hash out some of the stuff. It's that boiling pasta pot thing. Like this whole thing is stressful and terrible and I just need to talk about it. Let off steam. Oh, cup holder. Let off steam and, and get the pressure out. If I don't, it just builds and that's when it gets bad for me. I'm grateful for people that just let me talk or just talk to me about the situation. It does a whole lot towards making me be okay. It's a weird thing, you know, to let someone know you're appreciative without pushing it without saying too much. Because if you're constantly like, thank you, thank you, thank you, it makes the whole gesture seem disingenuous, but I am continually trying to make an effort to be appreciative of the amazing people in my life. I'm, I'm so lucky for the support I have through this whole process. I'm trying to get my list of questions I wanna to talk to the mediator about together so that I'm ready. When I go, I can make good use of the time and figure out what it is I need to do. I'm pretty darn sure, 99.79% sure, that I won't be using the mediator. After talking to my attorney and respecting the hell out of him, he thinks it's a bad idea. So I think I'm more than likely gonna think it's a bad idea. I'm an open-minded person and I promised her that I would see her mediator. So I'm doing that, I'm, I'm making good on my promise and I'm not saying no, but I'm thinking probably not. Like it's never felt like a good idea since she met with the mediator without me. That's always felt like a big red flag. Am I ever gonna catch a break? Like seriously, I got to the dentist, I walk in the door and as I, <laughs> well basically she's standing there. She had just finished at the dentist. You know, like she's just there, there she is. There's my wife, she's just standing there talking to the receptionist, checking out. And it, it, it's just shot, it's just like, oh. And you know, I, I don't even know if the car was here in the parking lot and I didn't see it. I just did not expect that I'd be seeing her today. And the, the, the receptionist was telling her something and was like, she was like, oh, hi. And she was gonna loop me in. And my wife looked at her and said, uh, I'd rather not talk about it, we're getting divorced. We're getting divorced. And now my mind is of course being like, what would they get, what was she gonna tell her? What does she want, not want me to know dentally? You know, what, 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 none of my business, it doesn't matter, but it was fucking hard. So I sat down in the chair and let her finish her thing and was just like, I can't believe she's here. I can't believe she's standing there. Like I haven't seen her in weeks. She doesn't talk to me and there's my wife. There's my wife at the dentist. And it was like, like, like a, a kick of adrenaline. Like your heart is just like, Wow! Adrenaline, beat, 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 beat. And then as she went to leave, I was sitting in the chair, she stood next to me. She didn't say hi, she didn't say how are you, she didn't say anything, anything polite that a normal human would do. N no, no conversation. All she said was, can you call me later after your meeting? It it's her whole focus. She's focused on getting divorced, on mediation. She's, she's like a dog that just wants to play fetch and it's cold and it's not civil. Like, so I didn't even look at her and I said, sure. How am I married to that woman? How was I her soulmate? How did she love me? And it's just gone. It's just off. It's just, it was on and it's off. She's somebody else. It's like her brain is different and my brain isn't different. How do, how do you do that? How can you be so single-minded of purpose? Even if she's over the moon in love with this guy. She was over the moon in love with me. How does it flip? How does it flip so, so digitally? How does it go from on to off? And how does she, how does she not look at me and feel something? How does she not look at me and say, hi, how are you? Instead, seeing my face represents telling the woman, I don't want to talk about this. We're getting divorced.
every single time I see her. How is she so fine in all of this? God, I had such a good night last night. Is this some karmic balance thing? Oh, if you have too much of a good time, I'm gonna smack your ass with <laughs> the pain and adrenaline of seeing your wife. Haha. <laughs> So I go into the, you know, I go in for my appointment and I sat in the chair that she just sat in and I had the same hygienist that she just had, you know, like, like, like I was in the same space. So when you think about ghost or energy or like the chair I sat in was the last person to sit there was my wife. Like, what are the odds? Then if she tipped my chair back and, you know, they have a TV on the ceiling, what show was on? Oh, Fixer Upper. What show did we watch? For days on end last summer when she was recovering from her broken leg, we watched Fixer Upper. So, <laughs> I've just got this... <sighs> I'm already upset, and then there's this just visual reminder of how we suffered last summer. Or how maybe I suffered and she pined for him. Who, who even knows? So that, Fixer Upper was on, Chip and Joanna Gaines, they're great, but it, it just made me think of how hard last summer was. And then on the, on the Muzak system, the Adele Someone Like You song came on, which was meaningful to our relationship really, really early on. Like when we first got together, it was significant. So that's where I'm at. Given all of this, now, given where my head is at, now I have to go <laughs> talk to somebody about mediating and ending the marriage. You know, I was coming from a place of strength and confidence after talking to my attorney, and now I'm just deflated and gut-punched and low. I want to tell you that I regret falling in love with her. I re regret... being so open that I could be hurt so bad the way I am right now. But I don't. I don't regret it. I regret... Maybe not recognizing red flags as red flags, but so much of what I did in that relationship was because she needed someone who could do what I could do. She needed someone strong. She needed someone stronger than her, more resilient than her, that knew her, that loved her regardless of anything else. That was me. Steadfast, unconditionally loving, on her side, no matter what. And I can understand if we grew apart and ending things respectfully. But we didn't slowly grow apart. And she just destroyed me. She, there was no respect. Without warning, she stopped. She turned it off. And my God, she is off. There was no kindness in her eyes today. There was, there, there, was, there was no recognition that we ever had anything. And I think that's why it hurts so damn bad. When we first saw each other across the room today... There was nothing. I mean, my heart raced and she was like, nothing. Nothing. Who does that? I don't know what I need right now. I'm, I'm sitting here in the dental office parking lot. I don't know what to do. Should I go home? I, I don't, I don't know what to do. Where do I go? I guess I'm gonna just start calling people I don't know, I just need to talk. Errand number two. Now I'm headed to meet the mediator, armed with my list of questions and a whole lot of reluctance because who knows, maybe, maybe my wife will be there too. Stranger things have happened. I almost feel like maybe I wasn't wrong to think I might see her at the eye doctor the other day. God knows, maybe, maybe we passed each other by minutes, like who, honestly knows at this point. This is a weird kind of march to the gallows. You know, I know it's only an introductory meeting, but it's it's definitely outwardly admitting that we're ending this thing. And, and I know, I know, we all know it's happening. But even still, it's only been three and a half months since I found out that she doesn't like me. Or, you know, that she's not in love with me. I think normal people take much, much longer. That, that dumb phrase, the only thing that stays the same is change, like, it gets more and more meaningful to me. I think it's gonna be a hard few months. It, I mean, it's already been a hard few months. So I wouldn't be so dumb as to say, oh, it couldn't get any worse. It could, it could. If that little dog disappears, if she takes the dog, it will be worse. It will hurt probably on so many levels that I haven't even comprehended yet. The sentimentality thing is gonna be hard. The holidays are gonna be really hard. The fact that we'll never reminisce. When you can't reminisce about something, it. it that is kind of like a death. 
And maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'll meet somebody and it will feel wonderful and passionate and so much more amazing than anything I've ever had. God, I hope so. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be incredible? To have love and passion and all that and also feel like, oh, and this feels healthier? That would be extraordinary. In one mindset, you can say, regardless of what she did now, regardless of who she is, they were the best seven years of my life. I was lucky to be there. It was fantastic. I had the experience. It was an awesome experience. But then the, the opposite of that is, given how it ended and the cruelty with which it ended, was it an authentic experience? I perceived it to be, yes, I perceived it as an amazing thing. But to be treated so badly makes me wonder, was she authentic? Okay, that went all right. And here's the challenge, to take my lawyer's advice over what I feel. Because he's given me a lot of information you know, in terms of what my approach should be and what I should be thinking about and how the process should go. And she confirmed a lot of that, but she was vague in some things where he isn't. You know, in terms of spousal support, she talked about starting with this guideline. There's a guideline and things we can look at. And he, I asked her how the court would look at it and she said, oh, they look at the guidelines and blah, blah, blah. She never said anything about software that they'd run it through. He plotted the numbers and came up with a number. And that concerns me. She seems very nice and she seems, I don't think this is a, a, a totally complicated divorce, even though I don't want it, but I don't know that it would come out in my favor. And I don't know how much, I, I mean, I guess I should fight for that, right? I should fight for everything. Uh, and the price is higher than I thought it would be. It looks like it would be 6,500 up to 85, like thousands of dollars. Holy man, holy crap. So if you want to set up an appointment with both of us, while you're there today, please let me know. You can call me while you're there if that's easiest. Like like clockwork, she she just texted me. She just wants out, she wants done. Is that an omen? Is, is that it telling me, no, 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 no. You somebody else. I need to think a little bit. I need to drive and think. Now I'm like, oh, is she in the parking lot here? Does she see me? She's not my friend. She's not good to me. She's just somebody that wants me out of her life. That's a terrible feeling. Hey, person that was the love of my life, I just want to be done with you. I want you out of my life. That's what it feels like to be me right now. Maybe I'm going to go to the barn and just pet a horse. And then I'll go home. Even in that text, she assumes that I'm going to use her mediator. God. Yeah, it, it, it's all her way. It's got to be her way. She's not even allowing for the fact. See, like a normal person would would have texted, how did it go with the mediator? What do you think? Right? That... That's what a normal person would say. I'd never met this person before. I had concerns. So what she should have said to me is, how did it go? What do you think? Is this gonna work for us? And instead she just drove her agenda and said, you can set up the appointment for both of us if it makes it easier while you're there. It's all about her. It's all about getting her agenda through. No, 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 no. that's not good. Let's go for a drive. Let's see. Went to the dentist. I saw my wife. Had a bit of a freak out. Took a nap. Went to mediation to talk about divorcing my wife. Went to the barn. And now I've got ice cream. <laughs> I can only do so much to turn my day around, but uh, salted caramel fudge. Hopefully that'll do the trick. Uh, I will see you later. Well, I just got home and I am just feeling fully overwhelmed. The barn was good. Ice cream was good. I had a really long phone call sitting in a lot of traffic with people who are trying to help me and really well-intentioned, but it's, it's just stressful to hear over and over what you should do, what you should do, what you should do. And I know what I have to do. I have to divorce my wife. I know, like there, there's no secrets there. It's just hard, you know, it's just, I'm, try, I'm trying to make sense of it and digest it and it's hard and I'm suffering today and I could really use a hug. <laughs> now I'm gonna check my mail. Okay, so it's been a rough, rough day. And I bought a couple photos from Warren, Warren Keelan. Uh, I love his work. He, he shoots wave pictures and shark pictures on Instagram and he's amazing. I bought a couple images. I just, I've been thinking about it for weeks and weeks and I, I just did it. I just bought them. And I just reached out to him and I said, hey, I'm so excited. I, I bought these things, uh, I, I can't wait. And he wrote back and he was like, thanks so much. And, and he, he's been writing to me and I, I'm, I'm like starstruck because I love his work so much. I can't believe he's, he's um, 
DMing me on Instagram right now. And he just said that he'd like to gift me another photo. Since I ordered a couple, he'd love to send me one more. And I, I, I've been laughing out loud because, wow, wow. Uh, somebody I admire so much is being so incredibly cool. What a weird day, huh? It went from such, such a rotten morning and tough afternoon to this little pocket of brightness. And he has no idea. He doesn't know what I've been going through today. Like, he's just awesome. If by chance you ever watch this, Warren, thank you. You have, you have made my night.